So let's talk about transportation, interstate transportation of firearms and transporting it, whether it's uh, via flying or via vehicle. Yeah. So now you had said is the amount of people in the company, a lot of them in the southern states, doesn't matter. They, they yeah, no, state all the state other, you know, it's, it's funny, and, you know, I have I have 12 states in my territory, mm -hmm. right? and somehow like half of them are the states that have extra special restrictions, and <laughs> they're all different. Right. Every single one of them, you know, the, the rules in Vermont are different from the rules in New, in New Hampshire or Massachusetts or New York or Connecticut right. or Rhode Island. Like everywhere you go, the rules are different. I mean, I, New Hampshire doesn't really have any rules. Like, they can still do what they right. want. But the guys out west or the guys in the south, they literally, they're like, yeah, no, I just, just throw guns in my car and I like drive to another <laughs> state that I show them to people and then I put them back in my car. They don't care right. uh, because there's no, no extra rules. Right. Uh, definitely, uh, it's definitely kind of a pain, right. uh, but you know, we work through it. So, and, and, I, and I get the question all the time, and, and Pat probably gets it as well in, in classes and stuff. Uh, 926A of the federal law mm -hmm. allows you to do interstate transportation. If you're going from one location, you can legally own it to another location. Point A to point B. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody doesn't have a pistol license in Florida, mm -hmm. and they live in New York, they can't drive from New York to Florida, and then back from Florida to New York. They want they, that, that, that point they're stopping at to vacation or business or whatever. It doesn't become. They don't, right. So that's exactly. why people get their Florida license. They take our multi-state course uh, um, or they'll end up uh, driving to Pennsylvania so that if they're going to PA to Hershey Park or something. Then, then they're good. Then they're good because yep. from New York to PA and back, they can they can cross state lines. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing a lot of people think is, like for instance, South Carolina, in order to get a license in South Carolina, you have to ha own property there. Mm -hmm. So you own property in South Carolina, you can get a non-resident license in South Carolina. Well, not a lot of people own property in South Carolina, right? They mm -hmm. live in other states. So if you're driving through South Carolina, people are like, oh, that means I got to go around South Carolina? No, no 926 you, you can yeah. drive from point A to point B. But in order to do that, you got to make sure that the gun's unloaded. It's yep. got to be locked up. Locked in a case, ammunition separate from separate, ammunition. And the furthest part back from the driver. Now, I mm -hmm. say that because it truly says in a separate compartment, but what if you don't have a separate compartment? Bingo. Like, I drive an SUV. Like, right. there's or some seats, van, and then there's a there's yeah. a holding area. Or a pickup truck. Um, I mean, but I can't physically reach my arms aren't that long, key. so I figure it's okay. Because if somebody has, you know, like, people say, well, I got a lockbox under my front seat. I'm like, well, the law right. says a separate compartment, so if you've got a a trunk in your car and it's in under your front seat then it should not, be in the trunk of your right. car and like, you're not following the law and then you can't claim 926a right well like, go ahead i'm sorry i mean no no but go ahead. my question would be the lockbox itself is not considered a separate compartment because you still have to go through the action of i understand it's, i'm yeah. not out of arm's reach i'd have to look at well, it exactly but i think it says trunk or something to that extent i think it alludes to if, the yeah if the, if the language is trunk that's a that's one yeah. thing but if the language is separate compartment then a good lawyer could yeah. make the argument that yeah. a lockbox under is the seat is a separate compartment, right. and in, in particular, if the case is that you have a magazine that you can't access at the same time as you can access the gun, and mm -hmm. the gun is unloaded. Yeah, you know, right. right. So there's there's some gray areas there. It's really important to understand local laws, guys. And, and that's, that's actually true. very, very valid in the sense. That's why in, in all of our classes, we talk about that higher level, right? It's like mm -hmm. in New York State, it's not a duty to inform state. You don't have to let law enforcement know that you're carrying. But if you travel to another state that you do have to let law enforcement know and you get in the mindset, I'm not going to tell them because I don't have to, are you going to be in a state? Make a that big you, mistake. Right. You, you know? don't tell them and now it's a crime. So I always tell people, it wouldn't it be better just to inform all law enforcement? Just let them know. Now, yeah. I'm kind of biased because I am law enforcement, so that, you know, I have that, that side of the uh, every law enforcement's good, right, kind of feel maybe a few are bad. But, um, There's like three of them. They're all in movies. Yeah. That's, that's their thing. <laughs> They're the bad guys in movies. Those are the ones that rack the gun, and then when they get to the uh, bad guy, they rack the gun again. Right? They rack the gun, or they, cock the, they keep cocking the hammer yeah. back somehow. Yeah. Uh, or before they, they shot before they go into a room, they, they put their hand on their elbow. Yeah. Oh, right. Or that's... Charlie's Angels. I had one girl in one of my classes, uh, one lady, she, she had uh, always done that. She, she was holding it up like this, and I got so sick of telling her, stop that Charlie's Angel shit, that she <laughs> tagged me on Facebook afterwards, and she goes, Matt Mallory, stop that Charlie's Angel shit, and then had a picture of her or something. Of, of her doing yeah, that. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it was okay. funny. She, it was, she, she was a good sport about it, but it was, it was driving me nuts, this Charlie's Angel stuff. Yeah. So we were talking about handguns and how we transport those mm -hmm. and how we can't transport those in New York State because yep. we'll potentially end up in a jam. What about long guns now? Because if you're transporting long guns, the, the rules are a little bit different. So right? this, and this is the funny thing. New York State Penal Code says that if, a, if you're in possession of a firearm, a long gun, mm -hmm. okay, it says firearm actually, in possession of a firearm and you have ammunition that can make that gun fire, right, mm -hmm. the ammunition for that firearm, any amount, 
so one round, in your possession. Now possession, the definition of possession in the penal code is vehicle, on your body, on, per, on person, in your home, right, within your something you own, etc. So that being said, if you have one round in your pocket and the gun in the trunk locked in the lockbox, it's technically could be considered loaded. That's there. still... Which yeah. is insane, right? That is now, kind of insane. Now, if you lay, layer that on top of the DC law, NCON, right, environmental con conservation, the NCON law says you cannot discharge, you cannot have a firearm loaded in a vehicle. You can't discharge a firearm, a long gun, from a uh, uh, on top of a car, oh, uh, a tractor. Uh, actually, I don't think we're, in, I'm from Vermont, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think we're allowed to do that. I, 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 you know, it's funny, I'm a, a huge shooter, and mm -hmm. I sell guns for a living, I, work, I don't really hunt at all, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a bunch of rules about discharging a firearm from a public road, yep. uh, because people used to, like, they drive around until they spot spotlight a deer, the deer, spotlight yeah. the deer in a field, and then they get out, and then they shoot off the hood of their truck or whatever, right. so I'm Where pretty sure we're not allowed to discharge a, uh, a firearm from a vehicle or touching a vehicle, like, yeah. like you said, anything right. like that, or anywhere on a, on a public road. Now we can do it from the, the for off the shoulder of the road. Can't shoot yeah. over a road, but you got to be off the shoulder. So as long as you're off the shoulder, you can shoot. But mm -hmm. you know, if you pull your vehicle off onto like a little side road or something, and then you lay on the hood of your vehicle, you're breaking you're the law. Right, yeah. Even so, and this this is crazy too. You're hunting, and you put the even if it's the safety's on, and you don't have one in the chamber. If there's mm -hmm. shells in that shotgun, and you lay it on your vehicle, it's you broke the law. You broke the law. And, and that people get hosed for that all the time. You know, the one I always kind of wondered about that, though, where I come from is this whole, like, everyone always says, oh, you, you can't shoot a, a gun from inside a vehicle. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot if you're this, you do that. I had a buddy of mine who collects military vehicles. He actually owns a tank. Like, okay. no joke. Nice. He imported a tank. Can we have him on the um, yeah, I he, he would love to be on our show. I'll get him. Three acre field out Yeah, he'll, he'll, bring, he'll, bring, he'll bring the uh, or Sabre. It's a, it's, a, it's a light tank from Great Britain called the nice. Sabre. And uh, it's really cool. It's got a fake 30 millimeter gun on it. It's hooked up to a propane tank. So when you get on the gun, you can actually aim it. I aimed it the other day in his backyard. Wow. Aiming at his neighbor's deck like a half mile away. And uh, How far is he from here? Uh, you same area as I am, Vermont, so half, five and a half hours. I'm mean, getting him to trailer up the tank yeah, and be, drive it here. It would probably be better if you guys drove it. I was going to say, maybe oh, that's a road case, trip. we should yeah. go road see trip. Yeah. But, uh You want to see tank, hashtag, yeah. hashtag see the tank or See something. a tank, yeah. Um, I'm sure we can convince him. He's he's big into showing everybody his tank. Uh, um, cool, but he's had a couple other military vehicles where like they've got like pintle mounts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I've been to machine gun shoots where yeah. guys had like tanks and pintle mounts on like yep. vehicles and stuff with like machine guns on them, and right. no one no one seemed to care about that. So right. I guess as long as you're not hunting deer with like your M60 <laughs> on the back of the jeep, like, if there's it's anything fine. left of a deer, well, you want to make yeah. instant instant uh, back straps. It's like done. Done. Right. <laughs> No processing needed. Uh, 240 Bravo. <laughs> uh, boom. Get that thing right off. But this propane gun, it's so cool. You get on this thing wow. and you start pulling it and it just goes boom, 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 boom. And then wow. like there's muscle flash. Like my, my Facebook profile picture is me hanging out of the turn of the tank, screaming and like waving my fist. And there's this big bright muzzle flash coming out the end of the gun. It, it, it's really cool. We used to use uh, an inert 50 cal in certain training events. Mm -hmm. It was set up the same way, so it had a propane tank, and yep. it, you would that's how you cycled it, and it actually had muzzle flash. Mm -hmm. Obviously, being an M2, it's very loud, right? Yeah. right? And uh, it's really effective at getting people's attention and <laughs> helping people understand like what suppressive fire right. really is, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be anywhere near you one. or you know, right. you're it's just it, so startling. Right. Yeah, you're yeah. just like, I need to get down. It's probably what they did when we uh, low crawled underneath the Constantine wire in basic. Remember that? Oh, no, they were tracing around. I remember. <laughs> they were tracing around for sure. Uh, so uh, as far as tra more trans transporting things, let's talk about that. So when we talk about, like we said earlier, the New York State Penal Code says that you cannot have a loaded gun in a vehicle, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it also says that any amount of ammunition in to the same proximity of that firearm, right? In your possession, the gun's loaded. So you can see in New York State, and we go through this all the time, Article 35 class that I teach, use of force, that these laws really contradict each other. Mm -hmm. You know, butterfly knife. You can't have a butterfly knife in New York State. What? But what? Is it butterfly knife or is it, I think butterfly knife you can have, but it, maybe it's, that's it's not any automatic, automatic knife. There's see, a, I can't think of a butterfly knife as an actual weapon. I figured it's like a hobby where like people do a right, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's like, like, the thing. And uh, this guy looks like he knows how to use a knife. I better get out of here. Guys. <laughs> But there's one knife. I thought it was a. It might not be butterfly, but there's one knife that's illegal in the penal code. But then DC law says you can have it with you when you're hunting. How, um, how do you have it when? You, <laughs> you can't have it, but you can have it if yeah, you're, you're hunting. hunting. So it's so also you, a crime to have a wrist brace slingshot. 
Oh, so really? A slingshot with a wrist brace? We sell those at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You yeah. Can, you can they build. sell stuff. It's like uh, my little, I've got a little uh, saber, saber red flashlight that's got a, a, a stun gun on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bought one, had it shipped to my house. It's illegal in New York State to own. So, but you're cops, so you can. But I didn't have to show my ID or my badge or anything. They shipped it right to me as I'm a civilian. Yeah. Well, so, it's funny. Was it was that like stuff, a, but then that's on you, you take it, it from is. here. Well, well, was that from like Alibaba or something? Was that direct? <laughs> was that direct from China? I think or? it was Amazon. Bob, Amazon. Okay, but yeah. um, and, and that's the perfect example of that is just because you can get it shipped to your house doesn't mean it's legal. Yep. True. Right? So you got it. People have true, to be true. cognizant of that. Now, granted, if you're you know if you're carrying something, you shouldn't have like like this is illegal in New York State. What, what is that? It's a little kitty. It goes in your keychain. This is you just like. Is it, is it like a? What do you think? You just you yeah, punch, punch somebody you in the head with it. So like, that's the intended purpose. It's, it's of like it. brass knuckles, but it's made out of plastic. So in New York State, that's called uh, plastic knuckles, and that is actually a misdemeanor to be in, in uh, possession of. So you got my cuffs on me? Yeah. Just, just <laughs> I didn't do it. It wasn't me. So, it wasn't me. But something oh. like that. And most law enforcement, they're going to be they're going to be like, you know what? You're not supposed to have that. I don't want to charge. It's too much paperwork. Let me just confiscate it. Right. Versus, yeah, exactly. Let me arrest you and confiscate it. Okay, arrest you or confiscate it, and confiscate it, and then you have to be charged, yeah. and then there's it's going to cost the legal system money. Right. And, and we know. always talk about ignorance of law is not a defense. It's not. So you, you can't go on, I didn't know, because that's not going to pass. The only people who can do that is what Hillary Clinton. Like, Hillary Clinton and, and other politics. celebrities. Yeah, and celebrities, too. Oh, did, you, did you know that if you're a senator in the state of Mass, from the state of Massachusetts, you can drown girls in rivers? And that's okay. Really? Yeah, I heard that. At least in one only, instance, right? only in the Chappaquiddick River is it okay? But but other places it's not all right. But there yeah, you so. can. I don't know if it's a um, Massachusetts senator thing or if it's the last name. It's thing, a last name right? thing. It's got to be a last name. Probably a last thing. Last right? thing but, but no, you're right. So so we've instead of having no gun zones now, we also have no prosecution zones, right? For yeah. for certain no people, they, they they only extend just that, right around this guy's mm -hmm. bubble, right? The first bubble. Yeah, it's crazy. So let's take it to the next level when we talk about transporting firearms when you're flying. So okay. do you do any kind of flying? I, I have done it several times. Okay. Yeah, I always thought it's weird. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what the, the rules are for you guys. So what I always do is it's obviously locked, locked in like a Pelican or something. Mm -hmm. um, so no, no ammunition present. I heard you, you can actually have it. Up to ammunition. ammunition. You can have ammunition with the gun. I generally, if I'm going to travel somewhere with ammo, I don't bring, if I'm going to travel somewhere with a gun. If I need ammo, but a lot of times for me, you know, this is the funniest thing is show. I travel around. I don't actually necessarily need to shoot the guns. I just show right. them to people. But unless I go to a place where, like, hey, can we shoot this? I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, Do you, you have ammo? <laughs> um, you know, so uh, what I always do is I, you know, got in the case, locked up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I always go there and you let them know at the counter, and like, hey, I got a gun. And they're like, oh, and they're like, it's in this case. And they're like, okay, cool. And so you open the case and they fill up the little orange piece of paper, yep. Yep. right? And the funniest thing, this is what I always get, this gets me, and it's one of those people don't know anything about guns. Mm -hmm. Right. So true. The gun's supposed to be empty. Yep. Right? So I remember the first time I ever traveled with a gun, I said, she said, is it empty? And I said, yes, of course. Would you like me to show you? And I opened the action. It was a handgun. I went to open the action on the handgun to show her that it's empty. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. You just, that's fine. Just, just put that back in the box. Just put it in the box. And I'm all like, Okay, cool. All right. But I'll just put it in the box. Nothing to worry about it. It's, it's only going to hurt you on its own, right? You know, <laughs> if, I, if I don't touch it, that's when it's dangerous. I, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's a very specific rule. Hey, is the gun loaded? No, the gun's not loaded. Okay, we'll take your word for it. Right. Like, yeah, well, I, I, the rule should really stay, if possible, open the action. Open the yeah. Leave the action open with the gun in the case, if possible. It's, well, I've, I, had, I, I've actually had somebody do that one of the oh, eight, really? and I don't remember if it was Tennessee or something just last year so when I fly around as pro staff for laser ammo or USCCA I always take a gun at least a gun but usually many multiple guns, guns. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm, I'm there I come up to the counter I said I have guns to declare she goes okay I need to check them all and I was like uh you do and she goes she goes yep I got to check make sure each one's unloaded I was like but I thought the orange card says that it says Right, I thought the orange card. I'm declaring that it's unloaded, and you don't have to. And she's just like, "No, I got to check them." I'm like, "Okay, okay cool, whatever." Yeah. You know, I, got, I got time. I usually get there about an hour, hour and a half early. So I start taking them out and checking it. And I was just like, "Yeah, just funny. I'm usually not, you know, having to do this because most people in your position don't know what guns are, you know." And she's just like, <gasps> and she stormed away. And I was like, "No, oh, yeah, I think you offended her. I think you offended that." She one. goes over and tells her boss, and her boss comes over and he's like, "Is there an issue?" I'm like, "No, no, no issue at all, sir. I'm just doing what she's telling me to do and showing her the guns." And but I just thought it was weird because I've never had to do that never before. Had, yeah. And he goes, "You don't." And he looks at her and goes, "He's verifying they're unloaded by signing the card." And I was just like, "That's what I thought." I pissed her off more. <laughs> Actually, you know, and you you know, it's funny when you just remind me of I forget who I was talking with somebody else in industry mm -hmm. that was traveling to shot show. 
with uh, SOT machine guns. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is a weird thing. So if you guys, and you guys have a Type 7, so you could potentially have SOT yep. sample okay. guns. That's what we're going to be doing. So you're going to be, so let's time. say you've got an SOT gun. This is really weird. From that orange piece of paper. Yep. That's the, oh, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. So you, you're talking about TSA one to look, right? Yes. TSA. So this is weird. Well, no, so, I take it back. That, that was the actual um, that was, ticket counter. Okay, ticket oh. counter. So ticket counter, they normally don't want to, they don't it. know, they don't yeah. want to touch, they don't know anything about it. They just want to give you your orange card, exactly. have you sign it, and be done with it. Right. For sure. I have once been stopped by TSA who insisted that they had to see the gun. Okay. And the weirdest thing in the world was they swabbed it with the explosive thingy. Really? He swabbed my gun. Huh. With the, and it was funny. It was a work thing. It was I actually had an SBR rifle. Mm -hmm. They don't care about. Uh, I had a copy of my, you know, uh, FFL for the company. We had uh, all that stuff. They don't care about paperwork. They don't care about any of that stuff because they don't know what an SBR is. Right. But he swabbed my gun with explosive swab, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, okay, you're good. And then I, I took it in the left. But uh, mm -hmm. I had guys. Um, so TSA cannot cut your locks off no. or open your package, your gun without your present yeah. there. You're because the only one supposed to have a key to that. Bingo. Yep. And uh, someone was telling me uh, TSA, the, I think it was at McCarran, cut open their SOTs. And they when they got the package, there were no locks left on it. Ooh. And they went to ATF, and they heard that they were actually going to go back and find out who at TSA opened it up and yeah. prosecute them. Uh, because I guess that's been happening a lot lately. Well, Pat McNamara um, recently posted a thing on Instagram where he was traveling. And he had all of his stuff squared away the way he was supposed to with TSA. And his bags actually got rummaged without his knowledge. They had done something similar where they went so behind his back and, and got to his stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't remember if the story was that something came up missing or whatever, but it was very clear to him because everything was set up in a very Certain specific order. kind of right. way very that OCD. somebody had been, yeah, obviously he's an <laughs> attention to detail oriented type guy, right? So, um, but yeah, he was obviously reasonably so he was pissed off yeah. about it. And, uh, but yeah, so that's something that, that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's yeah, not just so one something, airport. Something right? to be aware of. You go, when they, it could happen. And when they do that, if they do get into your luggage, they're supposed to put, and I've had it happen once, they're supposed to put a, a bigger white TSA like tag the, and the the sure. the declaration that they've been in your in your luggage. Right. right. That's a good point as far as the locks. I had traveled once, uh, probably a couple years ago that I think about, um, and I had opened it up, signed the card, put the card in the box, went to shut it and start to lock it. She goes, oh, no, 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 i got to bring it to TSA unlocked. I'm like, no, you don't. And she's like, she's like, no, I do. And I was just like, why don't you get TSA and bring them here, and, I'll, and I guarantee you don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't let her take the guns because the second she did, she's breaking the law, yeah. right? She's in possession of firearms that, that she's, she's not licensed really because be, yeah. she could actually you know, touch them, even though she, even if she walked away with the case, she's still in possession of them, but yep. still. Um, so TSA comes over and goes, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm like, you guys need to train these people better. They have no it's, clue. They're no, telling people they're the no wrong idea. stuff and yeah. literally making people accomplice to a crime that they're committing by, you know, having them hand guns over that are op wide open. I mean, she could have walked around the corner, take it out, put it in her pocket, closed it, and handed it to you. Handed it back. Who would have yeah, known yeah. better? I would have known until I got to Vegas or something. Right. And, and by then, she's already robbed a 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> by and then... And it's my fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. were right. right. By then, that, that gate hostess is... Making the big, big 7-Eleven yep. money. So the, yeah, one, right. the, the couple things that I usually will do, I'll tell people is, uh, once you've declared it and you've, you've told and you've declared the guns unloaded and you put the orange card inside there, shut shut it and lock it. Then at that point, TSA has got to check it. They'll usually X-ray it. X, yeah. Once that's done and you get a thumbs up that it's been X-rayed good, then it goes you on your flight. flight. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because, you do stand. You stand yeah. there. I. So I haven't done that every time. Oh, right, enough. and I you do really should. Time. You should. I do yeah. every time because you never know. I mean, what would happen if yeah. you're if you hand it off and then you leave and you're on your way to your flight or you go to the bathroom or you're eating something and there's it's noisy and they're calling over the PA. Well, we got to open your bag. We got to open your bag. Right. And, yeah. and you know, and then they don't ship your bag or something. Or they cut the locks. Or they then they break the lock. Yeah. yeah. It's so and then they get you get there and they're like, "Sir, you can't fly with us because there's no locks on it." You're like, "There was locks sure. on it." Well, we cut the locks because you couldn't get a hold of it. Uh, what? <laughs> I had one time in, uh, I think it was Wisconsin, I flew out to, uh, for laser ammo, I flew out to USCCA headquarters to film some videos with, uh, record some videos, there's my age, film, uh, record some videos with Kevin Kowalski. Awesome video film. And uh, on the way back, I had some holsters, and I had them on the top, and they had x-rayed it, and they said it looked like a big, dark mass in there, and they weren't sure what it was. So the lady comes up and he goes, we need the key to your, your box. And I was like, absolutely not. I was like, you need to take me to the box and I'll unlock it. Well, that's... You, know, you can't come into the back area. It's a secure area. I was like, well, fine. Let's find a place that we can do it together yeah. because I'm not giving you the key. And if you won't bring me back there, what do we do? Well, we got to go all the way to the front of the airport. I'm like, 
And that's what we do. That's so she, we walked up to the front, and they brought it out, opened it up. I had probably four or five uh, law enforcement officers around me watching me pull one thing out at a time. We get to the bottom. They swab it. They like, oh, it must have been the holsters. Well, okay. Here's a business card. You guys need any laser ammo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 oh, it's I did into a marketing up. I had that one one time. I had the. I, I went to check my bags right at my home, home airport in Burlington, and there's two people at the gate. There's a, there's a woman and there's a, a dude. And the dude's all like, oh, there's some cool guns in there. I'm like, yeah. He goes, where can I buy one of those cool guns? I'm just like, here's my business card. Just uh, send me an email. I'll send you the right local shop. You can pick up whatever you want. Um, He never never emailed me, though, so he wouldn't have been that serious about it. But, you know, whatever. So I just want to say one more thing on the transportation of firearms. um, And that is that if you guys have, like, access to chamber flags or things like that or gun locks, like, one of the things you can do with a revolver, you can open up the uh, cylinder. cylinder, right, mm-hmm. and put a gun lock just around the frame so yeah. that the cylinder can't it actually can't close. Actually close. Yeah. Right, but you don't actually inhibit your ability to close the case. Mm-hmm. Most it's cases, most right? Yeah. Most cases, a gun lock is going to be big and it's small enough that it's not going to interfere. Get your way. Yeah. Do, right? Right. Or I with like a, a medium-sized pelican normally. Yeah. That's like, or well, that's for like a handgun. Or then I run like a big pelican for handguns and rifles. Sure. So if you have a, a semi-auto, right? One of the things you can do if you have a chamber flag, you can just throw that joker mm-hmm. in there. Then you got an orange visual indicator going up. You got an orange vi- visual indicator all the way through the muzzle. No mm-hmm. question there, right? right? You could also do a gun lock from the slide, like mm-hmm. open the, the action, mm-hmm. run the gun lock down through the magazine well, and lock it lock there. It. That, and way, that way you don't have to run it through the muzzle. Can't even work. Yeah. Right. Now we can't even work the gun. We can't even put the gun into battery. And we know that there's no magazine in there because we're right. going down through that magazine well. well, right? Yeah, so there's it. a lot of different ways that you can kind of set yourself up for success. So you don't even need to touch the guns when you get to the mm-hmm. counter to check them in. So that way exactly. nobody's nervous, right? We right. can kind of yeah. alleviate some of the <laughs> Do you want me to show you? No, right. No, 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 no. Yeah, because we're coming from the non-secure side, mm-hmm. trying to get to the secure side, right? Exactly. But if we start acting a little bit crazy, or somebody thinks that we're doing something that makes them, you know how it goes at the airport. Nervous. An airport employee accuses you of doing something mm-hmm. crazy, and TSA is going to be right there, and you ain't right. flying for yeah. at least a little while. For a while, yeah. right? So just set yourself up for success where you can. So a couple, a couple of things on that too. When you talk about going to once you've declared your firearms and yep. you've checked them in and you got the thumbs up and you have to go through now TSA and, and do the, the whole check mm. uh, of your person, make sure that you don't use your you don't have your range bag with you uh, that you're not doubling a range bag as like a backpack or something like that because if you have even gunpowder in there sometimes that could cause problems. Uh, any any spent even gun parts. Right. Uh, we flew out to Shot Show a couple years ago, and I had uh, I think it was two years ago. And then I had some knobs for the end of a of a uh, of a bolt, and I was just like, uh, you know, anybody coming from Shot Show, make sure you don't have any gun parts. No gun parts anywhere. And they're repeating it over and over, and I'm, I'm like, I wonder if they'll understand that this little teardrop is a, you know, I mean, I'm, they, are they going to recognize yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. A gun and they did. Probably. I, mean, I, I got through. And if you if they did, I would have just thrown it in the garbage. But because yeah. it's not, you know, That's right. yeah. but if it's ammunition, they're not going to let you throw it in the garbage because it. It's an explosive, so it, you better have somebody standing there waiting for you to hand it to them. I've heard people say that they've had uh, magazines with ammunition in it. They don't want that inside the, you know, unloaded no. separate, but the yep. ammo's got to be in the original factory box or carton, yep. or reloading box, something like that. can't be more than, typically more than 11, 11 pounds, mm-hmm. though they don't weigh it. Uh, it gets expensive. I flew out to USCCA uh, Wisconsin for their um, level one, level two instructor course for the DSF. Mm-hmm. Rob, Rob Pincus is a collaboration with them. Oh, cool. I did that back in the summer, and uh, <laughs> I brought, we had to have 300 rounds of ammo. So 300 rounds of ammo weighs more than 11 pounds. It definitely does. And, yeah, no, definitely. And <laughs> I didn't want to buy the ammo there. So, of course, I put it in the, ba- in the, in the bag, got it in there. It was over 11 pounds. I get there, I declare it. Oh, you're four, you're, I think she said it was five or six pounds more heavier, and I'm like, crap. So I started taking it out. I got down to like 52 pounds, and, and you know, it's late, running late. I'm just like, what's the extra cost? She goes, it's uh, it's a hundred dollars, and I was like, it's a lot. It's a hundred dollars total, or a hundred dollars on top of the thirty bucks or whatever I already paid. She goes, oh, it's a hundred dollars on top. I was like, I could have bought the ammo. You could have bought the ammo there. Right. It's like, or you can uh, you can send if you have like a hotel you're staying in, mm-hmm. so you send the ammo to the hotel, or yeah. it's, it's just the we do a lot of stuff like that. You just you just go to the store and you know mail it off just to pay. And we have our FedEx account, so I guess I could send it from here or there. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so make sure it's it's the guns unloaded, ammunition not in the magazines. That's a huge thing that, that they'll look at. I've had a TSA agents say that you know they have ammo ammo there, and 
you go to hand it to, you can't put it in the garbage, and you don't have anybody hand it off, you'd be lucky if the TSA agent says, well, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like, about yeah, the best, best scenario. Yeah. Ooh, otherwise, free ammo. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have to get out of line, go back. And I do the, um, I forget, what's, what's it called there, the, where you get the speed speed line? Oh, uh, pre-check. Pre I got that, too. That, that is awesome, it, it is. by the way. If it's if they're working. If, oh, I, I haven't had any problems with it yet. It's, it's been I, pretty good. Oh, the one time, just the one time, I was at Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Hartford, Connecticut is a land of two kinds of people. There's really poor folks, and then there's <laughs> really old people. money. Yeah. Yeah. So, whereas normally, you go to the pre-check, there's no one around. Right. And you just walk through. Mm -hmm. In Hartford, Connecticut, the line for the pre-check is hundreds and hundreds of people. It's like to go through the it, more normal line. No, uh, that was thousands of people. Oh so God. yeah, I, I guess it was just a bad day. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was still like it was faster, but it was still like waiting in a line for like an hour. Wow. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Exciting. Everywhere else, it's it's nice. So just